Uh, as you guys know, the Dev Coffee team uh, was supposed to come, <coughs> but because of uh, some problems with their flights, they couldn't make it. So it, it wouldn't have been fair to just leave them out of the conference. So Mateus will present uh, his session virtually. So, uh, Mateus, you can start if you want. Okay. Can I start? Yes, yes, you can. Right. So, good morning, everyone. My name is Mateus Marcelino, and today I'll talk about some improvements that I've made in DevCoff's development with Flutter and REST API. First of all, like I said, my name is Mateus Marcelino. I am 24 years old and I am tech lead at DevCoff and computer scientist by UNESP. I am in IDMPR community since 2016 and been more active after the World Conference in 2019. So today we'll discuss about challenges using Flutter consuming IDMPR REST API and how we improve it the development of REST out token and what motivates me to do that. And after, after that, a complete use case, uh, POC, step-by-step -step using this feature. If you have any suggestions on how to improve the methods that I'm gonna present to you, you have time by the end of the presentation and your insights will be welcome. So the challenge. With the creation of the REST API, we at DevCoff start to look more affectionately to software house projects like apps and this kind, and this kind of stuff. Apps that complement some ERP process or using IDMPR as framework to build the backend. I think everyone here starts to think the same after the creation of REST API, am I right? So to our front-end development, we choose Flutter to, for having a low learning curve, being attract, uh, more attractive to new developers, and Flutter proposed multi-platform with a single code base, and of course, Google owns it. So we start with this stack in four projects, Autocorp, which the app is Autophoto, that is a online vehicle inspection app. QuickLog, that is a logistic app. CodeScan, that is an app that works like a bar barcode scan collector, sending data to IDMPR. And Tractus, that is a startup that promises a adapt recovery ecosystem. And in my experience in these four projects, I've noticed the same, the same problem in these projects in our front-end development. So we have a lot of code duplication in, in the requests. We have uh, different solutions implemented in each of, the pro uh, if each of these projects that works in another project. Uh, our developers is using different ways to reach the same result, like using different dependencies of Flutter, like DIO package or HTTP package. We have a lack of pattern, so our projects, when making these requests, we don't have a pattern. Doubts from junior developers related to using carry, option, carry options. They have some difficulty to compose the final URL. Doubts from developers that don't know IDMPR and don't understand why we have to, to why we have two tokens and why two two step login, and they confuses the two tokens in and messing everything. 
So to solve this, with this scenario, I've decided to create a package in Dart, which is the Flutter base language, abstracting all IDMPRS calls working uh, as an IDMPR client to the REST API. So I implemented one step login, normal login, requesting PO collections, requesting individual, individual PO by ID, create, remove, update a PO, and run processes. This is the, is more technical, but this is the struct, uh, structure of the project. We have uh, an API exception class that we use to throw uh, exception when the server responds to uh, with a status code different than 200 or 201 when, when we do a post request. Uh, we have a client model, uh, a login response, role model, warehouse model, and organization, organization model to serialize and deserialize uh, the JSON objects. Uh, we have the context expanding filter builder to make easier to compose the final URL. The IDMPR client class that has all these methods implemented. And uh, a model base that is uh, uh, an abstract class which all of the, the classes we use to serialize and deserialize the response, the JSON response uh, must extend extends from this class. Uh, operate, operators.dart, that is uh, uh, an enum, which all the operators available in future, in future carry option. And the session session dot dart that is uh, that holds all the information about the current user session. So to use this, this package in the Dart code or Flutter code is is simple. We just have to to depend on it in webspec file. After that, we can call the constructor idempr uh, client and set the base URL. After that, we can do a login request, just passing the 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 endpoint, the, uh, a user and the password. Here, I'm using a, a test instance of DevCoff. And after the login, we can do a uh, get role is request, get organizations, get warehouse. And finally, with this, this parameters, we can init the session. The init session does the put request in barra of tokens. And we can retrieve the second token and do the other requests. So if we have the all these this parameters in hand, we can just do, just call one step login and get the 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 second the second token and do the these requests. So after the init session, I am using the filter builder to pass some filters to to the final URL. Here I'm using some some custom columns just for example purposes. Here we have we have the expand builder too, when which I am using to retrieve AD user data when requesting a B partner. And in expand we can pass the column column name to use a select clause, a filter, uh, an order by, top and skippy skippy options. So uh, with the the our carry options, we can do a get request to 
to models CB partner and just pass the constructor uh, of the the class to serialize and deserialize the JSON response. Here I'm doing a post. Uh, I just create a new instance of MB Partner. MB Partner is a class in in Dart that extends the model base. I'll show to to you after this slide. And I do a post passing the 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 new instance. After after that, using the record ID of the created rec record, I do a get record to to request to the API, passing the passing again the constructor to serialize to deserialize the object. And after that, I change the name to be partner test put and do a put. Uh, request. After that, I just call the deleted method to delete the record. And uh, finally, uh, I run on the uh, role access update and print the logs. It's just a to, for example, purpose to to show how simple it is to, to do a request in using the package, different than this request that we have to wrote all this code and concern, or concern to, to the final URL. We just use the, the classes to compose the, the filters and the carry options and do a simple, a simple get request. So this is the MB partner class that extends from model model base. Here I create some attributes to the class and implements the constructor receiving a, a JSON, a JSON map, the to JSON method and from JSON method. Here uh, uh, we have two method to to Deserialize the object, but this is for this is for the case the the developer wants to use the same class to different operations. Uh, so I can uh, in the app that I uh, I will show to to you, I use the same class to get from RV open items and the same the same class to send to the C invoice model. So about the Dart package is uh, is just that. Talking about the REST out token, uh, the motivation to implement the REST out token is the first approach of IDMPR REST API. Uh, use a server secret that expires after the server restart. So every token generated before the server restart uh, is becomes becomes uh, expired. So we have to do login again. Uh, the the first approach uh, of the IDMPR REST API don't doesn't share the the server the server secret through instance so if you use load balance and uh, the session is moved to another instance the token generated in in first instance doesn't work in the second instance so to solve this i start a server secret in a sysconfig and this solve these two problems but the, the main motivation to, to create the configurable REST out token is to use it in webhook integrations. Because before that, we have to do something like, like that to, to use a process acting like a webhook. We have to wrote a whole project in Java in Google Cloud Functions, do all the 
these steps to retrieve the the token and after so after that we can uh, just call the the process with the rest of token we can just create a user and uh the role select organization uh, our house and language configure a time to the token expire in minutes in this case zero means no expiration and with the token the, with the generated token we can just uh put this the process where where I'll, mm, admin panel of some api and the generated token in the the authorization header and we don't need to use the google cloud functions and that's it the motivation to to develop the rest of token so to illustrate better these features uh, i create a use case is a simple app that consumes the IDMP REST API using the Dart package. Uh, with the, if the data uh, retrieved from the REST API, uh, I do a call to uh, an async API, which notifies the IDMP REST API and shows uh, a notification to the user in ZK interface with Broadcast Messenger. So the first step to, to do that is prototype this in Figma. Uh, the proposed uh, app is an app that the customer can log in and the app will list their invoices. They can select uh, an invoice and generate a payment. The payment is sent to uh, Payment gate, Gateway API which will simulate a transaction and uh, through a web hook will will create a payment and allo allocate it to to the invoice and notifies the user in zk web interface so this is the prototype in figma uh, i want to thank you my UX and UI sector because I am horrible doing design in this kind of stuff, but they do it really great. This is, the Murillo cannot do the the presentation, but this this the the login screen in the select role screen is part of a, of a, an, an attempt to create. Uh, to do a refactor of the mobile and web and web design that I think they he will do a community day or something like that propose a community day or something like that to show to to you so the second step uh, we use device to export the the prototype in flutter uh, using the getx pattern the device is a local local platform which uh, has a plugin to to the figma and uh, with some clicks we can spark the whole project in flutter which saves us a lot of time and effort the third step we we have to to fix some components because device is, is uh, a wonderful tool but uh, it it wasn't perfect we have to do some manual manual job we have to import patch in pubspec file create login method load the drop down components and select role screen create a method to retrieve invoice information and create a method to call the open peaks api I will show to, to you the, the code. Uh, I don't know if you, you can see the, the code. So I have three, three, three screens that is important to, to the project. Is with the simple method, the login in my controller, 
setting the base URL and getting the the login and the password, uh, I can retrieve the first token and go to the select role screen. Let me show the pubspec pub spec file too. To import the dependency, just we just have to to put it uh, item pair rest here. I'm using the depend the, the the dependence directly from our repository because I have to do some changes to the project. It's a new project, so while I'm writing the the app, I I noticed some some improvements, and uh, I didn't publish to this improvement to the official repository of Dart Dart PubDev until now. Oh. So this is the, the code to do the login and retrieve the first token. After that, we, we go to the, to the second screen. And this is the, just the, the widget code to uh, the, the screen code. And here is, is the, the code to do the init session. In my controller, we have just uh, I just uh, retrieve the the value from the components and init a session. To load the the components, I just have like a four four lines of code to get the. This is the, the client the client request that is the response of uh, the list of the clients are in the login response. To retrieve the ro uh, the roles, we I just get the value of the drop down uh, the tenant drop down, and with one line of code, I retrieve the the list of roles to the current user, and populates the the drop down with a single line of code, uh, organizations too. So after init the session, we'll send to, to the open items screen. And to load the open items, I just, I just use the filter to list only is SEO, SEO transaction. And this is a column that I store the, the, the identifier of OpenPeaks API. So we just want to list invoices that has this identifier and it's not waiting, waiting to, to, to return of the webhook. So I get the, the items, the, the open invoices by RV open item. And just pass the constructor of the open items item model. Uh, just to to do less effort possible, uh, I just used the generated class that UIs generate to me, and extend model base, and implements the the methods that that I will will use in my requests. So in this way, uh, just calling uh, the get method of the item pair uh, client, I can retrieve all my open items and populate the 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 cards. So when user selects the the invoice when the user clicks in the generate payment button, a request is sent to this API. Before the before I do the request to the the gate, payment gateway API, I just do a put in models C invoice uh, mark marking this flag to because webhook 
when we are when uh, we are integrating with an async API, the response maybe takes takes a lot of time, and we we don't want to retrieve an invoice that already have uh, the user already have created a payment, but it is not sent to the to our backend in I pair REST API. So this is the whole code to the to the app. It's some lines and just with with using the the filter the filter builder and passing this uh, parameter to the get get request. Uh, I don't I don't have to to compose the the URL by hand. So this is all with our front end development. The first step is the back end. I create a column identifier like I I show it in the front end in scene voice and create an event handler to call the OpenPix API and create a, a dunning record in the OpenPix API. Um, and uh, we have to create a process to process the webhook. This is the, this, the structure of the, the project. They've created a plugin named org to EWC. We have a class U2 to to declare our uh, my constants, an invoice event delegate, and a process to process the the webhook response. And here in org.ewc.ws model, I have just my my classes to serialize and deserialize the the JSON response of webhook of OpenPix API. So I will show the my backend code too. So this is the invoice event delegate is an after complete event. When we create an invoice and complete the invoice, the the request is sent to the OpenPix API. Uh, I don't uh, I don't take care of some treatments because this is just a, a POC, it's not a, a production project. And so I done just, just some basic treatments like print the exception stack trace. Uh, so I send the, the request to the OpenPix API and set the value return, the identifier return in the, in the invoice. Here I have the, the process called the webhook picks that will process the return from, from the OpenPix API. Uh, I have two parameters. The, this name is the the JSON element that OpenPix API sent to me. Uh, I have to do uh, a little change in in the IDMPR REST uh, deserialization to parameters, passing a JSON element, a JSON object to a string to to using my code and deserialize the the JSON response in my process and uh, if the event is a transaction receive event I create a payment with the open amount and allocate it uh, to invoice and here I create a, a, a method to generate a zoom link to when the broadcast message is sent to the user the user can click in this link and see the created records, the payment and the invoice. So in, uh, just to, to, just to control purpose, 
when I received the I received the webhook. When I received the webhook, web I set this flag to false. So with I don't know reports and this kind of stu and stuff, I can I can see if a uh, invoice received the the webhook or not. So this is this is all in my backend code. And the the last the last step, the fifth step is configure webhook. We just have to create a role with the access to created process, create a user and assign the role, uh, configure the rest of the token for the user and role, and configure it in API admin panel, uh, admin panel of OpenPix API. So once the the IDMPI REST API uses all the security layer and access layer of our role. We can do a lot of things and use the role to limit what the, the users can do. So I create a role. Name it. Webhook hole. We just uh, we just uh, process access to webhook picks process and create uh, a user to to assign the role. After that, I just configure. Uh, arrest your token to user in the role and set the the time to zero to token don't expire so like I said we have uh, a manual way to expire this token using this process the token will become unavailable and using this token will 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 result in a 400 bone status code, which means unauthorized. And that's it in, in the fifth step. So I will show the, the app working. I will just copy an invoice. When I complete the invoice, this generates the identifier and create a, a record in the OpenPix API. This is the, the dunning record created. And when I run the app, Take some time to to run the app. Um, the components, like I said, is being populated dynamically with the, the information that I'm giving in the other components. Here are my invoice that we created here. So when select this invoice, I can generate a payment and it notifies me in the in the zk interface zk interface just just uh, configuring the mm, 
Mm. Just configuring the, the webhook here. And create the payment and unlock it with the invoice, making the invoice paid. And that's it. It's a simple, it's a simple use case. But we, I, I created this in like a, with the back end, the front end, and the configuring the role and the token. Uh, I just spent like a, 10 hours doing that. And that's it. Uh, the conclusion is that with the, the Imperial Rest package, we can save a lot of time. This have uh, the package have a, a easy usage. Uh, every developer that works with me uh, can use this. The junior developers can use this easily. This reduces a lot of request errors. The main the main problem that uh, the my my developers are facing are are to compose the the final URL, and we have some project standardization. But this is this is not what I, what I'm trying to 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 show to you. It's not just the REST package and saying the Flutter is the best option, or to you using my package. Is that the motivation is to uh, how can I say that? Is to bring new developers closer to the community. Uh, I know that I sh uh, that Norbert uses uh, Angular and others, others, others members of the community use others tech, uh, technologies. And with this this approach, if if we create these facilities, we can we can bring some new developers to the the community. Making easy to today to to see the the value in how powerful is IDMPR as an ERP and as a development framework. And the rest of token we can have more control about the server secret. We can have a multi instance solution and makes more easily to to do webhook integrations. I think that that is it. It's all for for now. If someone has any questions, can you hear me in your end, Matthias? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so I have a question: Is when you are using these code generators? like the one that you use for Dart, once you customize the code, uh, it's possible to go back and use that tool uh, based on your experience, or now you have to deal manually with all the code that they generated for you? Uh, it's a good question. Once we have explored the pack, the, the code and doing some, some changes, we cannot use the, the the device to generate the new code, but uh, if we prototype new new screens in Figma, we can just uh, export the code again and copy the files to the to the project, because this tool uh, generates a really good structure to the project. Uh, I don't know if you you can see, but the 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 tools follow a good pattern, just creating the each fold uh, one for, folder to each screen. So if I get the prototype uh, and make more screens and generate again the code, the the tool will create another another folder, and I just have to copy the folder to the project. And implement my my requests in the controllers. This answer your question. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, I would like to ask, uh, you show us uh, the mobile solution, but the question is, uh, uh, do you have a solution for server-side rendering, like uh, to develop uh, websites or, uh, you know, because if you have a mobile, then uh, less authentication problem, security problem, but if you, in the case of Angular, we are using a SSR solution, that means uh, we are writing the code, but we need to have uh, one server on the server side, so one uh, Angular server. And in this case, in yes, filter, it's possible, or are you ready for this? Is it planned? How solved is because it's also a security question. For example, token. If you get a token, you need if 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 you get generate APK for Android, you have uh, the token stored into the local session in the Android. But if you make SSR solution, then you need to take care <coughs> about the session and the token security because it's GVT, so anybody can read it and probably abuse this uh, this session. So that was in our case a quite huge question. So we need to run a one server behind, and uh, always uh, we have a separate, let's say, session for front end. So we have session like you. Uh, uh, we have token connected to the item pair session to keep uh, allow make uh, change logs, and this is very important. But also on the because to hide all sessions on the. SSR solution, we need to have another session solution for, for uh, SSR. I don't uh, you understand this, but as after that, we are communicate not with IDMPR directly, but the server side solution is like a proxy. So we are calling to the proxy at the server side. There is a not much function, it is just transferring to the IDMPR the code and uh, hide the tokens, keep the security. Okay, uh, I understand. I understand the, the case, this new, but we don't have implemented it yet. Just, uh, we are not using the, the package to, to web solution until now, but it, it is in our roadmap, but we don't have this developed yet. We okay. just using two mobile solutions. Just just because of this, this new, we don't think about uh, a solution to that until now. <laughs> okay, that looks. I need to travel to Brazil and talk about that. <laughs> Tell to Murilo. <laughs> Parties. Okay. What we need. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Thank Just give to us your agenda, win, and we will make it. <laughs> no one else. No. Thank you, Matheus. So thank everyone to, to to this opportunity to to present to you all of the solutions we are using DevCoff, and uh, uh, and I uh, how can I say that? And I expect that it helps you in our project. And if you don't use this these solutions, uh, I just want to inspire us to create. Uh, more solutions to make uh, IDMPR more even, more powerful. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs>